So I had an accident in Peru while I was there. I was in Peru for a week, and um, I'm basically going to tell everyone what exactly happened in Peru because people need to know. <laughs> basically, um, flew to Peru. I had an incredible time. Um, lab nutrition flew me out there, and um, you know Santiago was awesome. He took care of me. I mean, it was just, the fans were amazing. The setups he had at the events were amazing. I attended about seven events and. Um, it was just awesome. I couldn't ask for something better. But um, one of the, uh, not one of the seven events, actually another event was to go on a TV show. And what I was told is it was the number one rated TV show in Peru. And they just wanted to have me on as a guest. So I agreed. We went, we drove, had no details. And when we got there, the producer was, you know, telling me, you know, yeah, we just want to have you on the show and this and that. And then he took me over and said, we're also going to have, there's this little, ring and our guys you know wrestle they wrestle in it and what we're going to have is we're going to have it like you're in the ring and you're so huge that they can't get you out you know so they're going to pretend like they're trying to push you out and you know you're going to you know keep them from pushing you out and and basically they're going to be ah you know and it's just like humor you know that you're just so big they can't push you out of the circle and so it was all fun and games and you know he told me he said you know don't be aggressive you know don't push my guys um it's not a contest, you know, I don't, want any, I don't want my guys getting hurt, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm like, yeah, no problem, you know, whatever. And he said, so, you know, they're not going to try, they're just going to, you know, pretend, and it was all fake, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So uh, I agreed to it, and basically, you know, I watched them do the little stuff, and, you know, the guys are really athletic, and, you know, they're actually pretty incredible athletes themselves. And I was watching them do other, you know, calisthenics and stuff, and events, and contests, and so I could see, you know, which guys were their more talented, you know, uh, guys. So when they brought the guy out that was going to pretend to push, try to push me out of the ring, you know, I could tell they picked, you know, their top athlete, their best athlete, you know. And so I was like, it doesn't matter, you know, he's probably the most popular guy, so that's what they want. So he came out and, you know, he had a full wrestling singlet on and knee pads and groin protection and headgear, you know, like it was a real wrestling match. You know, and I just had my cargo shorts and my tank top on, you know, and whatever, because, you know, we're just doing this for fun. So, you know, uh, anyway, when I got out there, we were just, you know, just, I was just not doing anything. As you can see, if you watch the video, I was just standing there and just kind of waiting for him to pretend to push me. And then as he pretended to push me, I kind of, you know, pretended to, you know, not let him push me and back and forth. And basically, uh, he went for like a double leg takedown quick, you know, kind of unexpectedly. And I sprawled a little bit like, what, you know, what the fuck was that? You know, whatever. And then I could see he started getting, you know, he would, he would act, he would act like he was just not doing anything. And then out of nowhere, he try to, you know, try to get me out of the rink really quick. Um, and I could, I could feel what was going on, you know, that this was not what it was said to be. So I, you know, pushed him out of the rink gently about two or three times just to get him out of the circle, assuming that that would end the match and I'd be done with this shit, you know. So. Uh, when I got him out of the circle a couple times, which there was two circles, and all, all you have to do is get the opponent out of the first circle. And that's what he was supposed to do was attempt to get me out of the first circle. So I pushed him out of the first circle probably three times. You know, and like I said, I probably pushed him with 10% of my strength, just enough to get him out of the circle. And uh, they didn't stop it. It kept going. So, you know, so I pushed him. I basically pushed him out of the circle and off the pedestal into the pads just to kind of end the situation, because believe it or not, I was getting a little out of breath. <laughs> My 300 pounds was kicking in, and I couldn't breathe. I was not used to that kind of, uh, you know, cardiovascular. So um, basically, I just wanted to end the situation and be done. So, uh, you know, pushed him out. You know, it was clear he was out of the circle, off the pedestal, out of the rink. You know, there was no question. And they ended the match, and I was like, okay, God, thank God, you know, I'm done with this bullshit. Then uh, they brought out another guy, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> They're just going to keep bringing guys out? So they brought out another guy, and it's live TV, you know, and what am I going to do? Say, oh, hey, you know, I'm too tired to wrestle this second guy. So um, basically what I did is I just pushed him off the pedestal right away just to end the situation, and they didn't end it. Brought him back in. I got him off the pedestal again, which didn't end, this, didn't end it. And, uh, and then he pushed me, and as soon as I put my feet down to hold my balance, my knee just cracked. 
and I fell backwards, you know, my knee just gave out and I landed on my back and, uh, you know, I knew something happened to my knee immediately and I basically got up and um, uh, fell right back down. I mean, my knee was jacked. And um, so, I mean, the long story short is um, the plan was to have a fresh guy come out one after the other, one after the other. And obviously, eventually, I'm going to get tired. And they misled me in the beginning by telling me that, you know, it's not a match. And we don't want you to, you know, try to get our guy out of the rink. All we want you to do is just, you know, stand and, you know, he's going to pretend like he's trying to push you out. And, you know, so it was basically a setup from the beginning to make me look bad. And obviously, I've been in TV for a long time. And I'm well aware of how, you know, they want to make bodybuilders look bad on TV. You know, it's, it's a joke and they're all muscle and, you know, blah, blah. And I fell for it. And I wasn't, you know, on my game and using my brain. And I should have known from the get-go. And I should have went out there and I should have just picked the guy up and slammed him on his head and, you know, been done with it. And another guy came out, I should have picked him up and slammed him on his head. But I went along with what the producer told me. And I just, you know, pretended and whatever and got tired. And, you know, the joke was on me. And... You know, um, I ended up getting hurt over it, which just doesn't make any sense, but I guess it was just a weird angle, or my knee was ready to give, or I have no idea how to explain it, but um, that's basically what happened in Peru. But I just want to say that um, they, uh, Santiago took great care of me, and I went to the hospital there. I had an MRI. I was going to get surgery. Um, everything was set, and while I went to the facility, um, I wasn't real happy with the facility, so I decided to not have surgery. So I actually stayed there about four or five days too long. And here I am, I still haven't had surgery, and it's been a week and a day since the accident. And I'm concerned about the tendon because the more time that goes by, the, the tendon will shrink, and then there's less chance of you know, being able to reattach it back to the bone. And my injury is basically a ripped patella tendon to the kneecap and two broken meniscus. So um, I'm basically, uh, I have a pretty serious road ahead of me of recovery, but you know, I'm not letting it uh, hold me back. I'm training every day and I'm eating and you know, obviously my legs and calves are gonna be shrinking, which is not something I could really afford. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so I'm on crutches and I'm getting a good shoulder and tricep workout. Not that I need shoulders and triceps as I you know, hover my 300 pound body around. But um, I just wanted to tell all my fans what happened in Peru because when I watched the video, people not knowing, you know, the details, obviously it looks pretty fucking bad. Uh, so, you know, I learned my lesson and next time someone puts me in a ring, anything to do with anything, you know, I'm going to be 100% and I'm not going to play any games, you know, or let anyone mislead me again. So, again, um, uh, I was fooled and I feel like an idiot, but... Um, Anyway, back to the knee. I'm uh, supposed to go to Germany in like two and a half weeks. I haven't had surgery. Um, I hope to fucking God that I can uh, get through this surgery and be in Germany for my fans and uh, for the fun. And um, I love, you know, traveling and going to the expos. And so I hope that I can uh, get this together and get back to training and, you know, um, keep everything the way it needs to be. So anyway, uh, thank you. Well, I still haven't had surgery, but as you can see, I'm still getting on with my day and doing the things I need to do. I'm out front here. Uh, China, where's your ball? Where's your ball? Playing ball with the dogs like I do every day. China, get your ball. China, go get the ball. Come on. China, go get the ball. China, get the ball. Come on, China, get your ball. Go on, get your ball, China. Good girl. Come here, China. Come on, China. Drop the ball. Drop it. Yeah, basically, um, I don't have any balls, so I use the neighbor's orange tree for balls right over here. I probably don't like that too much. As you can see, the tree is pretty bare because I go through about five or six oranges a day. But, you know, it works. China. Get it, China. <laughs> Go on, girl, come here. All right, girl, come here, China. Come here, China, drop it. There, there you go. <laughs> like, 
father like dog, you know. She can't even play orange for more than two seconds without eating the goddamn thing. So yeah, she eats about five or six oranges a day. So she's got her vitamin C's uh, pretty good. <laughs> but uh, we just tried to film this about five minutes ago, and I had my mail out here, and uh, there happened to be a guy walking his dog down the street, and off he went chasing the dog. And of course, the guy flipped out, freaked out. The other dogs chased behind, and I had a little bit of drama here on my street. Nothing out of the ordinary for me. But uh, anyway, so uh, here we are, doing what we do.